We begin with our media partners from the Voice of OC for an update on what's happening this week in Orange County government and politics. Here to talk about issues in the news right now, we welcome the editor-in-chief for Voice of OC, Norberto Santana. Hi, Norberto. Yes, thanks for having me again. Okay, Voice of OC recently came out with uh, an interesting analysis of Supervisor Janet Wynn's fundraising in the medical community and her votes on the board of Cal Optima, the county's managed health care plan for the poor and elderly. Norberto, now, what did your reporters find? When Supervisor uh, Janet Wynn took office uh, in uh, 2011, when she went onto the Caliptima board as the county's representative, she raised a lot of eyebrows with an aggressive uh, fundraising strategy in the medical community and her efforts to reshape the board of directors offering the hospital community a much stronger voice. Now, based largely on the reporting of Voice of OC, that nexus triggered a series of scathing grand jury reports and an ensuing investigation by the state's Fair Political Practices Commission of a majority of county supervisors and the Cal Optima Board. Now, the heat on that issue also was turned up recently with the recent announcement that an FBI task force is looking into Orange County politicians. Now, regarding uh, when our reporters indeed found a connection that state regulators will likely focus on. Wynn may have violated a state campaign finance law known as the Levine Act when she voted for $300,000 worth of contracts with an outside attorney, including one vote just days after the lawyer contributed $1,800 to a re-election campaign, according to a review of campaign finance records and meeting minutes that we looked at for the agency. Now, this graphic that you'll see now shows the sharp rise in uh, Wynn's medical industry fundraising once she took over at Cal Optima. It just goes through the roof. Uh, the close timing of the lawyer's contribution and the votes is exactly what the Levine Act was supposed to prohibit, according to the author of the state law, which we spoke with. The law generally prohibits local elected officials who are appointed to other governmental agencies from using the second post to raise campaign funds. Now, former Democratic Assemblyman Mel Levine, who wrote the statute, told us that his legislation was indeed intended to block political donations to an office holder who was in a position to determine the outcome of a matter affecting a potential contributor. All right, Norberto, you've also got a story this week looking at Anaheim City Councilwoman Lucille Kring's fundraising, showing that she changed on some fundamental issues after campaign fundraising on her behalf. Indeed, uh, when Anaheim Councilwoman Lucille Kring uh, campaigned for office last year, she was against a, a controversial $158 million hotel subsidy. She was in favor of a ballot initiative to require a popular vote on such subsidies. She also favored council districts and a civilian oversight board for local police. This year, she's flipped on all of those positions. And with thousands in donations coming from the interests connected to those issues, like the Disney-funded Support Our Anaheim Resort, uh, which has advisory board members who do oppose council districts, the Anaheim Chamber of Commerce, which was also for the subsidy and against district elections, and hotel partnerships connected to Bill O'Connell, the recipient of the controversial hotel tax, the tax subsidy. Kring's flip-flops are raising a lot of eyebrows amongst many local observers and supporters like Anaheim uh, Mayor Tom Tate. Now, Kring said she didn't change her positions because of the campaign cash, but her positions on the issues just simply evolved. Okay, now, speaking of Anaheim, the Voice of OC this month obtained documents from the city that detailed a curious arrangement proposed between the city and the region's uh, paper of record, the Orange County Register, where the newspaper would help the city negotiate naming rights for a transit hub. Well, Freedom Communications uh, co-owner Eric Spitz talked about this unique arrangement last week on Real Orange and said it was similar to PBS because uh, the organization receives government subsidies but also reports on government issues. There is a very big difference, according to observers. One key critique came from the Columbia Journalism Review, which wrote that that relationship is very problematic, even though it might indeed be profitable. Now, in the documents that uh, Voice of OC reviewed, owners of Freedom Communications, which is the parent company of the Orange County Register, promised media coverage as part of their pitch to Anaheim officials to be the naming rights broker for high-profile properties owned by the city, according to this presentation that we obtained through the uh, California Public Records Act. Now, the presentation to city officials lists media coverage and pu publicity and press as tangible benefits that the companies could look to in determining the value of placing their names on publicly owned buildings. Now, Kushner, uh, who spoke to us directly, has said that the media coverage offered would be by other Orange County outlets, but it's not really clear who that would be. Now, in addition, Kushner has come out saying that his company supports the controversial Arctic Transit Hub being touted by Anaheim, but that is opposed by other locally elected officials that sit on the Orange County Transportation Authority. 
Now, Kushner protested also that Voice of OC published these documents, saying that they were stamped confidential. However, as an investigative news agency, uh, we know that because the paper was partnering with the city, we were able to secure them through the state's Public Records Act. For a complete look at those documents and what they offer the city of Anaheim, simply go to our website where the source documents are posted. Okay, Norberto, thanks so much. For more on these Orange County stories, and we would should mention the stories that you're breaking now in the San Diego mayor's race, folks should go to voiceofoc.org. All right, thanks a lot, Norberto.